welcome. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Welcome to another episode of uh, my Monday Night Live podcast. Because it's Monday night, uh, the 11th of March. We're live. It's 9 p.m. Oh, shut up, Taylor. I forgot to close the window. It's Monday night, 9 p.m., 11th of March. We're live in France, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. France, because there's people watching from all over the world. Well, you just, eh, just shut up. Doesn't matter. We're live. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Cheers from wherever you are in the world. I am drinking a non-alcoholic uh, Brooklyn special effects beer. Um, it is non-alcoholic. However, um, I have been back on the alcohol for a little bit just because. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it. Maybe we won't. But hello. Um, I hope everyone's good. Who have we got? Uh, in the live right now, we've got Anne Austin, uh, legend Anne Austin is in there, Pokraj Roy uh, is in there, uh, hello uh, Le Boomers, Romain Filière, hello, uh, we're Boomers here on YouTube, fuck Twitch, uh, Anais is in the house, Kazoo, Hiko, hey, I needed you last week, I forgot, I forgot your name, do you know what I mean, I, I, that's how bad I am, Kazoo, Kazoo Hiko, Kazoo Hiko, uh, Manon, hello Kristen Kim, hello AW, hello everyone, Nathan McCoy, je suis très heureux, Nathan McCoy, so am I, je suis très heureux, comment ça va mon ami, oh bonjour bonjour, um, listen, listen, uh, and Anton Benedict Tree is in the house as well, listen, I thought I would do a, a, a fun episode today where we talk about, um, French stereotypes, I've been, I've had this thing in my mind, over the past couple of weeks, um, of just like French stereotypes. What French stereotypes do you have? And let's f let's break them down. Let's see if they're true, if they're not, why they're it just it kind of like my series that I made on Canada Blues called it Stereo Trip, where we do this. But I feel like we're live. I feel like the whole point in this live is interacting with you guys while you're here. So let's have it. What French stereotypes do you have? And let's see if we can decide all together whether they're true, whether they're not. Uh, <laughs> just because. Also, it'll make a good title for a YouTube uh, a YouTube uh, video, right? If I title this video something like, oh, the French stereotypes, broken down, destroyed, whatever, confirmed, whatever it might be. So let's have it. Um, as Loïc Pierrat is from Lyon. Salut, Loïc Pierrat from Lyon in France. Um, ta ta ta. Isulea, Lady Cat is in the house. Hello. Uh, Anushka says this is going to be fun. Well, let's let's have a look at it. All right. Irene is going. Irene Francfort, who is uh, clearly French or of French, some sort of origin, considering the name Irene. It could be Irene. Irene Francfort. <laughs> Complaining. All right. Uh, French people complain a lot. Is this true? Is this not? Yeah, it is true. Uh, French people complain a lot. As do English people. The thing I've always said is that French people are great at complaining outwardly. English people complain inwardly, and then we we then go to the pub in the evening. All right? Let's let's take it. Let's take something that's happened. Right? In social, as it's something social. You got to give me a situation where socially uh, we need complaining. Let's say the train is running late. Okay? Because I've had this experience before. Let's say the train is running late. An English person would just look up at the board saying train delayed and be like, oh, for fuck's sake, it's delayed again. And then we'll just keep it in. We'll keep it in. And then when we go to the pub in the evening with our mates, we'll be like, oh, mate, earlier on yet, the train was late. Oh, mate, trains are always late. And then we'll bitch about it in the pub together, right? <laughs> French people, they'll see the delayed sign and they'll go, Oh la la, mais c'est pas possible! And they'll look around for other people to sympathize with them, right? They'll be like, ah, mais, mais oui, mais, mais oui, mais la SNCF, bah oui, mais bien sûr, ils sont toujours en retard, bah oui, bah oui, bah oui, bah oui, c'est comme ça, Macron, 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 bla bla bla, Macron, Macron, les Jeux Olympiques, oh la la! <laughs> and then they'll all start, but that's how French people meet, meet each other, is you hear them complaining out loud, you're like, oh, he is a fellow person that <laughs> believes the same complaint is valid than I. Let's share a coffee, shall we? Um, so I feel like French people complaining is absolutely true about everything. Um, there's nothing not true. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
uh, it's 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 100% true. Uh, what do you think, uh, French people? Are you are you d'accord? Are, are you agree with the statement that French people uh, like to complain? Huh? Um, uh, 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 I feel like that's uh, it's just it's just one of those things. Do you know what I mean? We like to complain here, and I've become one of those people. I complain all the time. <laughs> Oh God, it's funny though, when people complain, it depends. It can be funny and annoying. I guess I'm annoying, right? Uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Let's hear them. Um, Bratislabat, Paul forgot to add putain in the French complaining lines. This is true. Ah oh, putain, oh la la, putain, ils sont toujours en retard. Ah mais oui, bien bien sûr, ah putain. Okay. Uh, control, alt, supprimé, je suis à la CGT. Donc oui, so... <laughs> I have people on my life from the CGT, the the complaining general. I don't have the T acronym. It's the unionists, basically the ones that as soon as they're like, "Hey, there's a reason to complain. Let's fucking go out on the streets." Um, Louis Pierre says, "On râle avant, on réfléchit après." Okay, yeah. They complain before and then they think about it afterwards. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> Anaïs says we do so much and we love it. C'est sûr, on aime se plaindre. C'est sain. Okay. Um, uh, there might be differences between Paris and the rest of France. Nom nom burp. This is maybe one of the stereotypes we should look into about Paris and the rest of France. I feel like complaining is general France though. I've had the same experience in Paris. At, because there's more things to complain about in Paris, I think... People in Paris complain more. <laughs> uh, but they're still complaining. Do you know what I mean? Um, right. A lot of people, French, a lot of French people complain about the, uh, 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 complain actually about the Olympic Games. You mean currently. It's one of those false friends, Bratislava. You might not be French. But actually, actuellement isn't the right word. It's uh, currently, if you're thinking about actuellement, actually means... De fait, au fait. Oh, actually, I've got a great idea. Not actuellement. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, yeah, the Olympic Games. Uh, I think they're right. We'll see, Bratislava. I am optimistic about the Olympic Games. I think they're going to be great for the country. I think they're going to be great for Paris. But just like in London, we like to complain about them before they arrive. Oh, um, se plaindre. Is part of is the main part of the French culture. Blender man, I fucking love your YouTube name. Blender man with a picture of a blender. Oh, great stuff. <laughs> oh, uh, Isolea, lady cat. Let's move on to another stereotype. Always talking about food. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll go with it. It's less f uh, f flagrant. It's less uh, flagrant. That's a false friend. Uh, it's less obvious than complaining. But yeah, French people do talk a lot about food, especially while they're eating food. That's the best that you're... This is what happens. You sit down for a meal in France and you, whether it's at a restaurant with friends, you eat something and you go, oh, c'est oh, incroyable. Hey, comment la recette? Donne-moi la recette. Give me the recipe. It is delicious. Oh, on aime ça. And then that obviously leads on to another conversation about food, and then you just end up talking about food for the entire time that you're eating food, which is fantastic. Because uh, in England, we just eat the food and we go, it's all right. Anyway, about the football. <laughs> yeah, we do talk about food while food. I wouldn't say all the time. I feel like French people talk about food more when you're eating food than other times of the day. I don't know if that's just a, a thing. But for me, that's been my experience that French people talk about politics outside of when they're eating um, and in food about food. Or if you're super hungry, like if it's getting towards the end of you're talking about your next meal, basically. At lunchtime, you're like, ah, oh, my wife talks about food a lot. She's preparing food for uh, Sunday. My uh, good friend Dimitri Mavromichalis is coming over with his uh, wonderful lady, uh, Ellie Raftopoulou. Um, Greeks, and uh, my wife is already planning what we should be. She's already, to be fair, she'd already been planning a while back. Like, oh, they're coming, they're arriving at breakfast, like brunch, lunchtime. What are we gonna do? I'm gonna make a cake, I'm gonna make a tart. I'm like, look, it's, I mean, 
it, we're two weeks out. Jesus Christ. Let's just, let's figure it out on Saturday. Let's go food shopping on the Saturday and then we'll have the food for the Sunday. No, 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 c'est pas possible. Il faut planifier. S'il y a des invités, il faut planifier. <laughs> that should be a slogan somewhere. Oh, God. Um, uh, Bratislabat, uh, Paul Taylor me corrige durant le live, il m'a foutu les honte. No, it's all right. I'm here to help you learn better English, Bratislabat. I'm not, I, I mean, I am correcting you. But, you know, what, what a privilege to have me correct you. <laughs> That's what you should be thinking. Oh, God. Um, uh, Pokraj says the French take a five-hour lunch break. Speaking of food, no, they don't. That's bollocks as well. Uh, first stereotype that we're throwing out the window here. French people don't have five-hour lunch breaks um, at all. I mean, it depends where you are in the country. In Paris, uh, it's, it's a one-hour lunch break. One and a half, maybe. It depends on what job you're doing. Now, do French people work? That is another debate, right? Uh, clearly they do because they're what? The sixth, seventh biggest nation in the world? Something like that. They also have a big population. But I'll be honest with you, in my experience of working in France over the past 15 years, whether it was a proper corporate job at Apple or my current job as a comedian, I have to say, that the French work ethic is not uh, what the English or American work. I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to not say the French do fucking no work at all, but they're very effective. Clearly, they have lots of meetings about meetings, and in meetings to debrief the meetings, and in a meeting to debrief the debrief of the meeting. But apparently, shit gets done because it's still the fifth or sixth or seventh. Uh, <laughs> Richest country in the world. That's not the word I was looking for. You know what I'm talking about, but there's no way I've never had a five-hour lunch break ever If it's on a Saturday or a Sunday I mean, I could argue that it's a 12-hour lunch break because you wake up um, And then it's basically time to eat straight away and then it's just apéro lunch wine digestif apéro before the next meal dinner digestif and then you go to bed um, if, you're, if it's a weekend and you've got nothing else to do and you don't have kids, yes. Uh, but if, it's, if, you, if you have a normal job, no one's taking five-hour lunch breaks. Myth. It's bollocks. I don't know where that comes from. But it's not 22 minutes eating in front of your computer having a sandwich like the English do, okay? So it's, uh, it's, it's longer than that, but it's not the five-hour, you know, it's not the five-hour. Um, I don't know what your experiences are, ladies and gentlemen of the live. Um... Casuico, in my experience, lunch break is about 30 minutes in Paris, but more than one hour in the French Riviera. There we go. Exactly. Um, I, I, I am agree with you. Uh, what else? Come on. I want, I, I want to know uh, what, what other experiences you have about lunch uh, to see if, if it's just me and the life that I've lived um, or whether it's um, the way it is. Go on. Let's have it. Let's, let's, let's hear your experiences, ladies and gentlemen. I'm for it. I'm re reading through the comments at the same time. Um, ta -ta -ta. Madame Graham Quinnett. Hello, Madame Graham Quinnett. What a lovely name. Uh, I'm usually a listener only, but I came here tonight to say that my kid speaks way more French than English. I'm a native English speaker and I've spoken to him in English since his birth. We talked about this last week. Maybe we'll talk about it later on. Thank you for sharing, Madame Graham Quinnett. Quinnett? I don't know how that last name... I'm going to say Quinnett because it sounds better. <laughs> Uh, Carla, in the meantime, says it's my birthday. Happy birthday, Carla. Uh, sorry, I called you Clara last week, didn't I? Um, what are your experiences with, with French lunch? Let's go. Um, no one's got any experience with lunch, apparently. Um, what about the French diet? We're sticking on food. Flavi Pichot. French diet? That's a good question. I don't know if it's a stereotype, really. Um, I think it's just a, I mean, there's no stereotype in that question. What What about the French diet? What, I mean, it's the same, I don't know. It feels like it's similar to most European countries. I mean, no, that's not true. I mean, it depends what you mean by diet. Ah, oh, it's a very broad question. But basically, uh, the diet is good. It's delicious food. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, that's it. I don't know what else. That, that, that wasn't the stereotype. I, I, I thought there was something in there. I picked up the question because I was like, oh, and then I've got nothing on the subject. 
Oh god. Um Eh, koi kis koi le fromage mon gars. I love your com yeah, it's cheese. I've already covered French cheese in an episode of uh, what the fuck France, but there is a lot of cheese, ladies and gentlemen, in France. This is correct. And the cheese is delicious. Um, however, if you're a not French person and a not European person, you know, if you're like an English speaker, Anglophone that comes from New Zealand or Australia or the US or the UK or some other place where cheese is shit, uh, then you will probably not like the cheese when you come here. And it will take, I hated cheese. Here's the three things I hated before moving to France, cheese, wine, and coffee. And now I like all three of them. Uh, yeah, the cheese here is great. Technically, apparently there are more cheeses in the UK. The problem, as I've mentioned this before on some other videos or whatever, is that in England, the problem is you can't find the cheese. The cheese, you have to go to a very special, speciality, specialty, speciality. I don't know how to pronounce this fucking word. Specialty cheese shops. Um, it probably depends if you're American or English, whether you say speciality or specialty. Anyway, you can get great cheese in the UK, but you can't get it at the local supermarket. Whereas in France, uh, not only can you get great cheese in the local supermarket, you will probably have a cheese shop near you, a cheese monger, uh, fromagerie. Uh, next to your place somewhere, wherever you live, and in which case the cheese is outrageous. Um, it's great. It's it's fun. It, it, you've got cheese for all types of occasions. You've got raclette, some of my favourite occasions of cheese. Uh, the ghost, it's just, it's, yeah, it's just in between the main course and the dessert. You're having cheese with bread. And you don't fucking, it's, you, you, you eat one and then the other. You don't fucking put the cheese on the bread and... What's that word? Spread it on like Philadelphia. You don't, you're not that much of a peasant. Do you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta appreciate the fromage. Um, so yeah, the cheese is great. Uh, but, uh, what was I gonna say? Is it overrated? I, you probably, yeah. I don't know. It depends how, 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 how much you like cheese. Again, I didn't like it before I came here. It's all right now, but I don't eat that much of it. Also, cause you know, most of the time, either my wife or I, I'm trying to lose weight. So cheese isn't the best way, do you know what I mean? To lose weight. But, you know, it, it works. Ça marche. That's probably why French people don't drink milk. This is not a stereotype that you've probably heard of. Or French people, you probably don't know that you don't drink milk. But compared to English speaking countries, let me tell you, your consumption of milk is zero. Compared to England, the US, Canada, that I've lived in, uh, Australia, I mean, first of all, we have milk in our tea, so there's a lot of milk uh, that we consume just through the tea. But then also breakfast cereals. We eat cereal all the time. If you're in Ireland, you'll have milk with your dinner. Uh, in the US and Canada, they've actually got bags full of milk, like re, like you put in a plastic container. You buy a bag of milk in a supermarket. That's what, and it's just, there's just like a whole line of, I, French people don't drink milk because you have 25 aisles of yogurt that are all the same yogurt with just different flavour and t 25 aisles of cheese. So you've had your dairy intake. You don't need any more fucking dairy. So you don't really drink milk uh, like we do uh, in the UK. We get, I mean, back in the day, we used to get bottles delivered, glass bottles delivered. The milkman would come and deliver bottles in front of our house. Um, I don't know why we drink so much milk because it's cow's milk. What is a cow's milk for? It's for their baby cow. And do you know what we are not? Fucking baby cows. So I don't know why it ever became a thing that humans would drink the milk. It's not like baby cows are drinking my wife's breast milk. Do you know what I mean? Like it doesn't, why are we drinking cow's milk? It's not for us. The nutrition is for a baby cow, which weighs more than us. It just doesn't make sense. The cow, the milk lobby are gonna come and cancel me now. You watch it. Um, right. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is good. I'm enjoying this so far. I hope you are as well. Um, what else? What else have we got? Uh, Irene Francfort, the colour of our eggs is st as a stereotype. No, it's not. For Americans it is, because Americans are fucking idiots, right? Here, Americans, uh, have got white eggs. 
I don't know where the white comes from. I don't know what's happened to your chickens, America, where your eggs are white. I don't know. They're all white, all of them. And you put them in the fridge. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Our eggs are egg coloured and we leave them outside of the fridge because eggs, it's... It's like putting a banana in the fridge. Why? <laughs> it's it's meant for the outside. So I don't know why. Uh, oh, India apparently have got uh, uh, eggs, uh, white eggs as well. Weird. America, why? I want to find out now. America, white eggs. Funnily enough, that wasn't in the Google search. It was America, white house. Um, why are American? All right, here we go. Let's find this out together. Why are American eggshells white? White leghorn hens are the most productive hens in the world and make more eggs for less feed than any other kind. Ah, well, there we go. That explains it, doesn't it? It's all about fucking productivity in America, isn't it? Got to be productive. Got to work. Got to be productive. Got to make the eggs fucking white. <laughs> right, why do American eggs have white shells and British ones have brown shells? Um... Uh, oh, this isn't true. I live in the US and it's very common to get brown eggs. There you go. Stereotype already out the window. Ah, uh, uh, love it. Love it. Um, yeah, I, that's... Uh, <laughs> Pockrash Joyce says capitalist chickens. Oh, God. All right. Uh, what else? What else have we got in terms of stereotypes, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, French stereotypes that we're trying to 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 either confirm or deny and this is only through my experience and you guys here in the chat uh, <laughs> uh, uh, What have we got what have we got? Uh, ta -ta -ta. Uh, Ambi is the potato McDonald's is better in France than it is in England agree. No, it's the same I mean, there's different, slightly different things on the menu, but it's the same. A, a, big, a big Mac is the same. I, I, I've, I've had zero different. It's the same. There might be some cool stuff on the menu, like a Mac baguette. Is there a Mac baguette on the menu? I don't know. Probably. Um, ta -ta, ta -ta. Um, lots of bank holidays in France. Irene Francfort is back with the, with the step. She's on fire today, Irene. Um, bank holidays in France. Which goes back to French don't work, which carries on to there are way there are lots of holidays in, in France. Now, this is true, okay? Uh, this is true. There are a lot of bank holidays in France. Um, and I, I, listen, I am torn. I have to be honest with you. As a capitalist person that grew up in a in a country like England, where you were told that the invent the the the, the, the industrial revolution, that mindset is still in our mind. You got to fucking work, son. Um, if you want to be anything in your life, you've got to work hard. And, uh, I, I, you know, a lot of the world still works that way. But what I like about France is that you can work less and enjoy your life more. That is, if you enjoy your life outside of work more than you enjoy your work, which for most people is true. However, I have been lucky enough to find a job that I actually like. Both jobs that I've had. My nine-year career at Apple, I loved. And my uh, nine-year career in comedy so far. I've loved. Have I been working for 18 years? How old am I? 37 minus 18. Yeah, 20. Exactly. Um, so my problem is I prefer working than I prefer. I hate going on holiday. I hate not working. So it annoys me when people around me are not working. Right. And that's a lot, whether it's the teachers at school. Oh, are you going to do the teachers at school? Yeah, I am. Uh, side note, uh, talking about bank holidays. The kids were off school for two weeks, right, until the 23rd of February here in Paris. And then she was back for one week, right? And then uh, they were on strike last week, Thursday and Friday. It's like, for fuck's sake, you just had two weeks off. And on top of that, our teacher, or our teacher, my daughter's teacher was like, oh, I'm sick on Monday and Tuesday, which means he didn't have to work on the Wednesday because kids are off school on Wednesday in France. What? How does that thing? I don't know. Um, and so it meant that for the whole week, it's, do you know what I mean? It's just like, ah, oh, come on. We've just had two weeks off. Anyway, th there's lots of reasons. And I agree with the strikes. And I agree with going on holiday a lot. Uh, the month of May in France is classic no, no one's working, especially this year, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on? 
this year in May. So we've got May the 1st as a bank holiday, like it is uh, across so many countries. The, uh, the, uh, uh, Labor Day is what it's called in English. So that's day off, which is a Wednesday, which means you take two days off before, two days after afterwards, bang, four days off, you get a week off. Or you wait till next week, uh, which is even better because we've got Wednesday the 8th of May, it's a bank holiday. We've got Thursday the 9th, which is the Ascension, which is another bank holiday, which means you just need to take the Friday off. You got five days off. Fucking loving it. Not only do we have that, then the next week we've got, oh, we've got a Sunday bank holiday. Shame. That means, uh, no, hold on. Monday, lundi de Pentecôte. Monday the 20th, which is the week after that, is another bank holiday. So we've got three to four bank holidays in May, depending on the year. And it just, everyone just ends up getting like, nah, we're not, we're not working. We're, fuck it. We're preparing for August when we're not working. We need a bit of training, just like I'm training for the marathon in August. They're training for not working in August. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, God. Ah. Uh. So yeah, uh, lots of bank holidays, much to my frustration, but you know, I've chosen to work in a country that is a, that, 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 that cares about not working. So you gotta fit in. You get frustrated, but you gotta fit in. Oh, what's that? You want uh, a bit of bread from the boulangerie on August the 15th? Good fucking luck! Um, oh. Pow, ta ta ta. So, um, and there's, oh, Nikki B is uh, from uh, South Africa and apparently they also have lots of bank holidays. There we go. I th in England, we have less bank holidays, but we do always put them on the Monday, which means that we never lose a bank holiday. Whereas in France, uh, you, can, you can have years where the, all the bank holidays, like a lot of them land on the weekend, in which case you're screwed because you can't take the extra days off. But then you have other years, like this year, where it's, oh, it's, it, oh, oh, you love it. Um, ta -ta 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 oh, 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 what else? What else do we have in terms of um, 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 stereotypes about the French? Let's go. Let's have it. Let us go. Let's go. Um, mm, mm, mm. Uh, Bratislava, cliche. We rule at cinema and we won an Oscar yesterday. Congrats to Justin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. You did uh, rule. I mean, you did win. You didn't win at the Oscars. But, I mean, statistically, the Americans won more Oscars than, than the French. So, technically, they, they rule cinema. I mean, Christopher Nolan. Ah! Am I, am I excited that my favourite director from when I was, I don't know, 18... Whenever Memento came out. When did Memento come out? Go on, Siri. Work, work, work for it, love. Go on, son. When did the film Memento come out? 99. I found it on the web. 2000. Uh, so how old was I then? 14. Uh, anyway, Memento. One of my favourite films. And then I fell in love with Christopher Nolan's films. Finally. He wins an Oscar and he's English. There we go. Hey! Killian Murphy, Irish. Hey! <laughs> oh, God. Um, anyway. Yeah, I don't think that's a stereotype. French films, is it? I don't know if it is. Um, um, <laughs> Margaret Phoenix. Uh, <laughs> I made the mistake of traveling in France. The whole month of May last year. It was great anyhow, but a little annoying. Yeah, you can't travel to France in May or in August. You, nothing is open. You, or it is, but it, obviously it being France isn't connected to Google uh, in the way that we have in the UK or the US. We go, oh, is this place open? I'll just check Google. Oh, it says it's open. You arrive. Guess what? It's open. Here in May or in August, you go, oh, it's open. You show up. Fuck, there's a paper handwritten note on the door saying, sorry, we're closed for two days. You're like, can you not update Google, please? <laughs> what year are we in? 1997? Ah. Oh. Nous vous souhaitons de passer des bonnes vacances. All right. Well, I want my fucking bread. Um, 
potato. Right, Ambies, the potato. French women are Karens. I've not heard that stereotype before, but they absolutely are not. Um, right, that one's straight out the window. Uh, what else? What else? Right, en, en, Enrique Ribeiro. Um, waiters are mean and don't serve you what you want in France. Now, this is what we were talking about, the difference between France and Paris. I will agree with you for Paris in this one, but I will not agree with you uh, for other places in France. Uh, in general, the service in Paris is shocking wherever you go, whether you it's the metro, whether it's at the airport, whether it's in a restaurant, whether it's a cafe, unless the cafe is run by some Australian expat uh, and it's like some hipster type coffee joint. Um, museum everywhere is just... It, I don't know what it is about Paris. It just, it, it, people don't give a fuck. They don't care about your patronage, right? You can show up at a restaurant, uh, a cafe, a bar, wherever it is, and they'll just, they'll come in with the, the <laughs> these, what do you call these? Coasters. You'll sit down at the table, the waiter will just come around and just go, we, oui. and that's it. Paris is classic for that type of uh, service. And uh, they don't care. They don't care. They don't have to be nice to you because if you decide to walk away, which you won't, but if you do, then just somebody else will come in. That no one, it's, it's just the way it is. Paris is so busy. It's the world's most visited city. So they're going to have the people coming through. Uh, if you go outside of France, then there's service like there is in many places where they are happy to help you. They work in customer service. They're happy to be there. But if you call somebody up, you call the internet people up like I've been calling them up for weeks and months now. They don't care. They just don't care. It's, 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 <laughs> it's hilarious how much they don't care and how much they could have such a better establishment if they did care. But yeah, Paris versus the rest of France. That's that's. Uh, that's where I'm going with that stereotype. Um, the French are pretty big smokers. Gavin B, 100%. I've gotten used to it now. I forget everything. It's only when I leave France and I go to a, another country that I realize, uh, I mean another country. I mean another country that is like in the Western world, right? Because uh, when the smoking bans came in place in the early 2000s, uh, it, I was in England at the time. Uh, it felt like just everyone stopped smoking overnight. It was amazing. Because uh, you didn't have the smell of smoke in nightclubs, in pubs, in bars. Um, and in France, that is still... I mean, obviously, you can't smoke inside. But they have basically... You, you walk through a, a, a wall of smoke to get out of a like a, a terrasse cafe. It annoys me that in France, in the terrasse, you can still smoke. Like, even the covered terraces. You've got the, you've got the bar, and then you've got the, 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 the seats on the street. But in the winter, they cover those up. And because it's not like a solid brick wall, people are allowed to smoke even though you're indoors, uh, technically. And you can't sit outside and not stink of smoke and have people next to you because Paris, everything is so tight that, you know, you're, you, there's no space in the, in the restaurants and bars here. So if you're outside and it's smoking, you're probably going to have to inhale cigarette smoke while you're eating. It's very annoying uh, for those people who don't like that. Uh, but yeah, French people smoke. I don't know if they're the biggest smokers in the world. Uh, they're not, but they smoke way more than uh, most Western countries, specifically English speaking countries. Me, when I was on tour uh, in Australia last year with my light and sound guy, Manu Manu, he is a heavy smoker. He's very, fr he's so French. Anyway, uh, he struggled to find anywhere to smoke in Australia because they've got rules where you have to be like nine meters away from the front door of the establishment to smoke, which basically means you are you have to be in the street. You can't smoke on the pavement outside of the establishment. You have to be in the middle of the road, basically. <laughs> um, so yeah, he struggled with that a lot. Uh, so uh, cigarettes is, is massive. It's ridiculous. I don't understand why French people still think it's cool to smoke. I don't know why they still do. It's so expensive. It's like 10, 15, 20 euros a pack. I don't know how much a packet of cigarettes is, but it's too expensive. I don't understand it. Um, the problem is the youth have now gotten into the vapes, right? The, the vaping thing, which is also a problem, apparently. Apparently it's very cant. I don't know. It's just, oh God, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't, it's, nah, nah. So yes, 
be prepared to smell cigarettes all the time when you're in Paris. Um, Bridget Leonard noticed the smoking immediately when I went to France. There we go. Uh, Pokhraj, the smell of smoke makes me suffocate and hot. I start sweating. Same thing. Uh, what else have we got? Anushka says, I've gotten used to having my hair and clothes stinking of smoke now as a student. I tell you what, let me tell you a story about um, a failed after party of mine when I did my show in Lille in December this year, last year, whatever, two months ago, three months ago. What are we? March. Fuck off. Um, so it was the almost the final show of the tour. It was the penultimate show of my whole tour last year. Uh, we did it in Lille. And it was 1,200 people, 300, it might have been 1,400 uh, at Le Sebasto, Sebastopol Theatre in Lille. What a, what, a, what a place. And then afterwards, uh, the team and I, uh, well, the team had decided, the team being uh, Manu Manu, my light and sound guy, uh, Julian, uh, my sound guy. Uh, was Julian there? I think he was. Uh, Adam, my manager, but then also the local promoter, my producer was there. Was she? I think she was, yes. Uh, and the local producers team, they were like, oh, we've got a, a, a like a, a, a um, uh, what's the word? A private, there's basically next to the theater, there's a bar called uh, L'Irlandais, the Irish, the Irishman, the Irish woman, the Irish man, because it's L'Irlandais. Um, and above that pub is like a Jack Daniels themed place. I think you can probably Google it. I can even probably show you it. It's actually very cool. It looks cool. Uh, Jack Daniels theme bar. Uh, L'Irlandais. L'Irlandais. Let's have a look. L'Irlandais. Jack Daniels. Uh, Jack Daniels. Let's have a look. If we go to images. Lire oh, that's just showing me. Uh, L'Irlandais. Jack Daniels. I've got to type in Lille afterwards. Surely. Lille. There we go. I mean, you can't really see the theme of the pub as we're looking at this, but uh, it, the whole upstairs is like a tribute to Jack Daniels. They got loads of whiskey, the chairs. It's great. Anyway, um, we had that privatized. Uh, is that a word that you say in English? Privatized? Privatisé? Uh, for us and the team. And we went upstairs and because the owner was like, well, there's no one else up here apart from you lot. Feel free to smoke. And within about 10 minutes, it pissed me off. So I just left. Um, and I got a kebab on my way home because I was just like, I can't, I don't want my shit stinking of, because I didn't, when I go on tour, I don't really bring a change of clothes, right? When I go on tour, I wear this and then in my bag, I have my polo shirt that I wear for my stat for the show. Uh, and then when I finish the show, I put my t-shirt back on or whatever. And then the next day, uh, I have another t, oh, do I have another t-shirt? Oh yeah, I have, usually I have a second t-shirt. Um, and then the jumper that I wear, because it was winter, is the same jumper I'm wearing the next day. I don't need two jumpers in two days, right? Uh, and my coat's there, and my jeans are the same jeans that I'm wearing the next day. And with the cigarette smoke, I'm like, I don't want it. I don't want to. So I left. Everyone was annoyed at me. And then I went and got a kebab. So fuck them. That is a story about French people smoking. There we go! <laughs> um, uh, uh, um... Right, what else? What else do we have in terms of French stereotypes? Let's go. I'm enjoying this. Um. <clears throat> Margaret Phoenix. Yeah, Jack Daniels at an Irish bar. It's made in Tennessee. Yeah, I think, I don't know how the bar works. I think they've got like a partnership with Jack Daniels or something like that. I don't know. Um. Uh. Enrique Ribeiro, uh, Paul Cabana, is a French comedian who does stand-up in Portuguese. Okay, he said only after living in Brazil and travelling back to France, he realised the Paris metro stinks. Yeah, it smells like piss and shit. It smells horrible, the Paris metro. And I'm comparing this to the London uh, Underground, the New York subway. I mean, the New York subway is pretty rough as well, if I'm honest. London, uh, the, 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 the metro in Barcelona, in Madrid are very clean, uh, very white, and very, I mean, you could lick the floor in, in, in those metros almost. Uh, what else? Where else has great metros that I've been to? Um, underground systems. I'm trying to think. I mean, Tokyo, obviously. Uh, I'm trying to think. Rome, I don't know if they've got a metro. I don't know if I've been in the metro in, in Rome. Oh, we, I have, but I can't remember it. 
uh, too busy with the queues that was go we decided it doesn't matter. It's too long of a story. But the Paris Metro is getting better because of the Olympics. Uh, they've opened, they've added some new trains uh, on new lines. The line 14 in Paris is what we're aiming for, right? Line 14 is automated, uh, the trains are clean, the, the stations are clean, and it's great. Uh, line 11 is getting an upgrade, which is uh, arriving near my house, which is great. Uh, the trains are, are upgraded on there. What, where else are the, so I was on line six the other day, those trains, horrific. That's, the, 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 that's what Paris was 10 years ago, basically. Line one was horrific, line one's good. Um, so yeah. There's some, it's hit and miss with Paris Metro, but uh, the newer stations are great. The older stations have, uh, they just smell. They've got like this little tiny channel of pee that goes down the side of the, and up and down the stairs. It's weird. If you go to an old Metro station, which is 80% of them, there's like a weird sort of, I don't know. It's just, it, it's not good. Um, so yeah, it, 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 but it is uh, one of the cheapest metros that I've been on as well. Cheaper than the New York Metro, much cheaper than the London Underground. I don't know about Barcelona and Madrid. Those are the ones that are coming to mind. But yeah, Paris Metro, not uh, not the most pleasant experience uh, to be in. Um, it just, it feels like this too, it feels like it's either super renovated uh, or shit. There's no in between, right? Even when it comes to like the machines and the gates, like there's some machines that are still in the Paris Metro, like you wanna buy some tickets, where there's like a roller, there's like a rolling pin thing where you have to roll it and it gets stuck because the mechanism is about 400 years old and it's just getting stuck there as if it's ru like rusted. Most of them are touch screen now, but they still do have some of those old machines, like the barriers, like turnstiles, instead of just barriers that open. Ah, oh, it's, <laughs> oh, anyway. Uh, so apparently, Eve Stadler says, in Lille, it's the same. As, every lift of the Lille Metro stinks of we in summer. Oof. Not an option, but to use, no option but to use it. Fiancé is in a wheelchair. Oh, God, mate. Also, Eve, I don't know if it's the same thing in Lille parking, but car parks in Paris, like the underground car parks, um, the ones that you pay to get in with the barrier, they all stink of piss as well. Um, it's great. I think there's just a, a lot of homeless people in Paris and that's where they go to the toilet. Or drunk men. Um, ta -ta -ta. Uh, what else? What else have we got? <laughs> uh, Jeremy says, les tickets de métro vont coûter 4 euros bientôt. Yeah, I'm not bothered about that because that's cheaper still than the London Underground. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. But what is hilarious is that for the Olympics, they announced... Uh, and by they, I don't mean the Olympics. I mean the, the, the Ile de France transport agency were like, oh, we're going to make the metro free for everyone for the Olympics, like they did in London. Ha! And then they come back a couple of months ago being like, oh, actually, it's going to be four euros a ticket, where it's currently one euro ninety, two euros ten. I don't know how much the metro costs. <laughs> I just have one of those cards that you beep and it charges you at the end of the month. And I... Can't be bothered dividing that charge by the number. But I think it's about 190 or 210. So it's going up. Macron, eh, hey, Macron, mais c'est pas possible, Macron. <laughs> oh. um. Kristen Kim, uh, the London Underground is 10 times more accessible for people with reduced mobility. I will say London, full stop. Uh, is 10 times more accessible for people with reduced mobility. Uh, the underground being one of them. Number two, taxis. The taxis in London uh, for decades have, you know, the, the, the typical London cabbie is made for a wheelchair. Uh, they're starting to have some of them in Paris now. Those London cabs have come to Paris and there's a company that I, I guess it's an app that you open up because the taxis, you either have five abled uh, able, how do you say, with not reduced mobility? M mobility? Able-bodied people, five of them, there's three at the back, two facing them, or you got space for a wheelchair in there. The buses, ah! I mean, the buses in Paris, it depends on which stop, because there's a lot of uh, bus stops. There's one near our house, actually, that now is, they've got a raised uh, curb so that the wheelchair can get on the bus. But they do have buses with, <laughs> with like an alarm here that when it takes about 45 minutes, as soon as the bus stops, for it to go ah, 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 
and the ramp comes down. But inside the bus is there's not a lot of space. Um, and London, I mean, in general, the, 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 the pavements, the sidewalks are much wider. Uh, so I would say in general, uh, London, it's, it's a much bigger place. So of course, it's gonna be easier for reduced mobility um, folks. Uh, so yeah, good work, Kristen. But I've never heard that as a stereotype, uh, Paris not being accessible. However, we will find out with the Paralympics that are coming uh, to see how... I can't wait for somebody in a wheelchair as part of the Paralympics athlete uh, that does a video completely destroying Paris and trying to... Oh, Paris wanted to host the Paralympics. The only thing I think that... Uh, well, what I've seen from the Olympic Committee anyway, I've seen the housing... Uh, and the Olympic Village, I got invited to go see the, uh, the, the Athletes Village and uh, all the new buildings that were built uh, for the Olympic Village, they are all accessible. All of the flats have uh, accessible bathrooms. Uh, so that's great because they're new. Of course, everything that's new is built for accessibility nowadays. Uh, but most of Paris is not new and that's the problem. Whereas London, a lot of it is new. A lot more of London is new than Paris. Does that make sense? Um, Ta -ta -ta. Uh, <laughs> Paul is involved in the Olympic Games, but he can still make jokes about it. I'm not involved in the Olympic Games. Well, I mean, is being an ambassador being involved? I don't know. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. I mean, I'm not an ambassador. I'm an ambassador of the marathon of the Olympics because I'm running the Olympic marathon. Uh, went out running today. The training's going great. Thanks for asking. It's fucking difficult. Oh my God. Um, uh, but yeah, I, that's my job is to make jokes about the Olympics. So, but you know, it's only fair. It's only, it's, I'm only making jokes if it's true. You know, uh, like the fact that they called their, uh, their mascot up here, a fridge. I get it, le fridge. I understood what fridgien and fr I, I had to Google it. But I mean, they called it the fridge. I mean, it's weird because it's everywhere else that speaks English, it's, a fucking refrigerator. It doesn't... They could have chosen a different name. <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> the fact that they look like a clitoris, I'm happy with that. Why not? Let's go. Uh, if more people, if more men understand the anatomy of females, then that's great. If they're like, oh, I didn't know that's what a clitoris looked like, then uh, great. Fantastic. We're all winning. Um, ta -ta -ta. Control alt supprimé. I'd love to see a video of you after two kil two kilometers. Easy, mate. Today I did four and a half kilometers. Fucking sprinting, slowing down, sprinting. I did a fart lek. That's what the name of the the, the plan is. Uh, the other day I ran seven kilometers, two kilometers. Easy. I do that in less than twelve minutes. Um, I would like to see a video of me after twenty kilometers of the marathon. So f halfway through. That's that's going to be the funny video to see. <laughs> Ah, oh. ah, oh. right, let's do one more stereotype, ladies and gentlemen. Um, or, it seems like you might be uh, wanting to uh, talk about the running. All right, all right. Gavin B, is it, is it hard to dodge dog poo when running? Honestly, yes. There's a lot of dog shit in France, and that's not just Paris. In the places I've been, people don't pick up after their dogs. It's just not a thing, I mean, Again, it's a stereotype, but compared to other places that I've been that are much cleaner, I have been to places that are more dirty. Uh, but yeah, uh, running sometimes I, I have to look down in the app. It's telling me I've got to I've got to keep form when I'm running. I've got to look up, but I can't. I've got to look on the floor as to not step on dog shit or the other stuff that's on the street. Um, right. Well, everyone's talking about the marathon. Then uh, let's. I'll give you an update on the marathon, ladies and gentlemen. I am. Um, Four weeks, five weeks in to the non-training training, to the pre-training training. My official training is 18 weeks long uh, and uh, that starts on the, uh, 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 in a couple of weeks. When does it start? On the 6th of April? When have I put that in my calendar for? La la la. The 6th of April, so it'll be the 8th because 8th is Monday and I'm doing it in weeks. Um, so now is the pre-training training. training. And uh, you know what? It's uh, it's going all right. I am not on Strava. Some people are saying, are you on Strava? No, I'm on the Nike Running Club app um, because I've always used them and I can't be bothered changing and doing a new thing. I, I can't, it's just, I, I like the Nike Running app. 
it's cool, it's got people in your ear that tell you that you're amazing uh, and it gives you tips and stuff while you're running and to be honest, the time goes quicker. Um, so it's great. Anton Benedict Trier, would you hit the gym strength training for the marathon? If so, how? It's a great question. I know uh, that uh, when I do start the 18 week thing, uh, the, 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 the Nike Running Club app uh, tells you that you uh, there's two optional Nike Training Club uh, workouts. So yeah, I will be running three to five times a week plus doing some like muscle stuff. I won't be going to the gym though. Fuck that! Uh, I, I, I hate gyms, I'm not a fan. I just, I'm socially awkward. I don't know how things work and I don't wanna go into a gym. I'm already awkward running, uh, to be honest, and seeing people, if I cross them and they're like, I I just, I can't deal with it. Uh, so being in a gym, not interested. So I'll do, you know, I'll do the things in there as best as I can. I'm doing all right, I'm doing all right, mate. Uh, so uh, yeah, honestly, it's, 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 today was difficult. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know if I can keep this up for five months, if I'm honest with you, but um, it's good. Do I feel better? I don't know. I Honestly, I've never really done any running because I never really enjoyed it. And I'm still not necessarily enjoying it. But I at least have a goal in my mind is to do the marathon in August during the Olympics. So that's what's keeping me going. If I didn't have that, I'd have probably given up again. It's just I don't find it. There's something about it that I just don't enjoy. Running, I don't know. It's probably because I don't run in a group. It's probably quite a social thing uh, as well. Uh, so, <laughs> speaking of the Olympics, the Olympic mascot looks more like a red poo to me. Do you know what? That's exactly what my daughter said. She, <laughs> she calls this le caca rouge. That's what my daughter calls this, le caca rouge. Papa. And now that the mascots are everywhere, like in Paris, um, and on TV, and in the shopping centres, and wherever we go. She's like, mais c'est le caca rouge, papa, c'est le caca rouge. I'm like, yeah, it is the red poo. <laughs> so between people thinking that it's a clitoris, and children thinking it's the poo emoji, but red, they've done a great job, Paris. Ah. <laughs> uh, um. Ta 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 ta. Uh. What else? Uh, da, 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 there was something else. I saw something earlier on, but I can't, I cannot, do uh, you know what I mean? Uh, i tell you what, my head, terrible translations. Let's do some terrible translations. It is 52 minutes past the hour. Uh, terrible translations, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to the podcast, you guys send me terrible translations that you find out and about um, on posters, on menus, wherever online uh, to my email address over here, which is terriblatranslations, F-T-W, at gmail.com, and uh, we go over them each week, because who doesn't like a terrible translation? Right, let's get it, let's, let's, let's make it happen. Oh, I get it, my head, because you just sent me one 20 minutes ago, that's why you wanted some. Right, let's go. Let's have a look at what we've got here. Uh, Red Becky, who's been on before, right. They changed this for the British market as it didn't appeal with the original wording. Okay, let's have a look at this. So, um, Grace, uh, chicken flavored noodle soup mix, a Caribbean favorite. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, authentic Jamaican. Is it? Is it authentic Jamaican? Chicken flavored noodle soup mix, okay. And presumably the original is what was next to it, which is cock flavor noodle soup mix. <laughs> A Caribbean favorite. Ah, oh, no artificial colors, flavorings, or preservatives, but it's flavored like cock. Oh my God, where is this from? Is this from the US? Or oh, presumably it's from Jamaica, if that's what they said. If it's authentic Jamaican. Oh my goodness me, that is amazing. Yeah, no MSG. Store in a cool, dry place. Hey, store that cock in a <laughs> in a cool, dry place. Oh God, cock flavor noodle soup mix. Um, classic. Thanks, Red Becky. Uh, Aiden Vlogging Limited. Yo, Paul, the French crisp company Brett's 
has launched a new brand of crisps. They have clearly done a direct translation from French tellement craquant to what is on the photo, which makes it sound like the crisp smoking drugs, lol. Bisou bye from Aiden H. Where's that? Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, God. It is Brett Le, le Chipsier Francais. So crack. <laughs> oh, my God. Saveur moutarde pickle. Okay, pickle and mustard crisps. I mean, already the flavour sounds weird. I do like their crisps, though, uh, Brett's in general. So, so crack. Why would they call that so? Because this is clearly French. So crack. Is it because it's crunchy? Is that what they're? Is that what they're? Is that what they're trying to get to? Because the flavour is 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 crunchy. Soulinde, Breton présent. Bah, Soulinde, can you tell us a bit more about your homeland's crack crisps? So crack. <laughs> so crack. <laughs> oh God. What I love is uh, when Spanish people say like, "Oh, mate, you're amazing. You're a legend." They'll say, eres un crack, eres un crack, hombre, you're a crack, <laughs> which means you're amazing. Uh, I love it. Uh, so, uh, Sulind doesn't approve of this, lol. Tellement craquant, so crack. Oh, tellement craquant, but why would they have translated it into English? I would understand if Brett's is, if this was for England. Tellement craquant, so crack. Oh my God. Come on, Brett's. Find an English speaker. You would say so crunchy, you idiots. Right, great one. Oh, sorry, I've taken it off the screen. Thanks, Aiden. Vlogging Limited. Right, Baptiste Diga. Hi, Paul. First, uh, I was listening to uh, the Fuck the All episodes, which is what this used to be called. Then I followed Monday Night Live every Monday evening. And now I try by this first mail to propose something for the terrible translations, Baptiste. Thank you so much. I thought about it many times to make sure it's funny and cool, hoping that you like it, and I think I find it. Uh, it's about Star Wars, the early version of the first movie, not yet modified by George Lucas. I think you already know that Star Wars had to be translated by La Guerre des Étoiles instead of Les Guerres de l'Étoile. What? Oh, Les Guerres de l'Étoile. Oh, yeah, okay. Or the lightsaber had to be translated by Sabre Laser instead of Sabre Lumière. Okay. Uh, laser saber, that's true. Sabre laser. But did you know that some of the iconic characters had their names translated? I think you'd appreciate the translation of Luke Skywalker. Ha <laughs> ha! Fuck off! Are these the original ones? Because he's not called, he's called Luke Skywalker, but the, I swear it's not fake and many websites talked about it. I hope it'll be in the next episode. Oh, it's Bratislabat! There he is. Um, right, Luke Kuri, Kuriciel. Skywalker, Cour Couriciel, Yan Solo, that is still what he's called. That, I mean, that's just hilarious. Because they can't pronounce the H. French people can't do the H. Han Solo, ils arrivent pas. Yan Solo, <laughs> Yan. It just makes me, why don't they just all call him like Jean-Michel, hey Yan, hey Baptiste. Princess Leia, that's fine. Tarken, Tarkan. Peter Cushing, wasn't that C-3PO? No, hold on. Darkan, who is Peter Cushing in Star Wars? What's his English name? Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, okay, that's fine. Z6PO. Is that what he's called in French? C3PO? Z6PO? Why don't they just call it C3PO? Because that's easy to say, C3PO. D2, R2, R2D2. Why are you changing it? It's like Tolki Wolki. Why don't you just call it Walkie Talkie? You can say both fucking words. Why are you not saying Walkie Talkie? Why are you saying Tolki, ah, Tolki Wolki? D2, R2. Nah, it's R2, D2. Help me out with this one, French people. Surely. Chikataba. Uh, Chikataba. Is that. Chewbacca, Chikataba! <laughs> it sounds like the name of a place where you would go and buy cigarettes. Et tu peux me prendre 20 Marlboro Light du Chikataba, s'il te plaît? No. Dark Vador, that's always annoyed me why it's called Dark Vador. Uncle Owen, Uncle Owen. 
<laughs> Tante Beryl. Oh, Chef Jawa. Oh, God, this is too good. This is... Tarkan is probably Chewbacca. No, who's... <laughs> Chitabanak. <laughs> oh, no, this is awful. This is awful. R2, D2, but the guy who told you the first version of the first film. Okay, so they did change it to R2, D2 at some point, R2, D2, but the first version. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, Tarkan, who is, who is Peter Cushing in Star Wars? Peter Cushing, that's such a... How do I not know this? Star Wars. Peter... Cushing. Go on. Grand Moff Tarkin. Oh, what? What? Grand Moff Tarkin? Is that what his name was? In the film, in English. Okay, in which case? In which case? I guess that's the same thing. Why is he fourth in the, in the listing of the credits? I guess he's got a good agent. That's what that means. Oh, mate. That's hilarious. Uh, Baptiste, that was great. Thank you so much. Uh, keep them coming. Kelsey. Uh, hi, Paul. Found this online. Thanks for all the laughs. You're very welcome. Thanks for all the listens or the watches. Uh, right. Uh, this is from somewhere Portuguese speaking. Perigo. Area sujeitada ataque de tubarão. Okay. Danger. Shark zone. That makes sense. Uh, right. Evite o banho da mar. Avoid sea bath. <laughs> uh, okay. As opposed to avoid bathing in the sea. Ah, uh, that's good. Em areas de mar aberto in open in the open sea. Okay. Avoid sea bath in the open sea. That makes sense. No periodo de mare alta at high tide. That makes sense. Ao amanecer e ao cair de tarde. Okay. At dawn and dusk, that works. Now for the rios in estuaries. Okay. Uh, estuaries or rivers. I thought rivers was a, a rio. Uh, whatever. In uh, areas profundas, in deep areas. That works. In aguas turvas. In muddy waters. Se estiver sozinho. If you are alone. Okay. Com sagramento u com objetos brillantes. With bleeding of you wearing bright objects. <laughs> Ah, that's great. Come uh, sagramento, if you're bleeding or with uh, shiny objects, because obviously a shark, they see something shiny, they're like, oh, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Har, fucking have it. Se estiver alcoholizado, if you are drunk. That's for the English people. Oh, that should be number one. That should be number one in the list if you're translating it. All right, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, Right. What else have we got? Manon Lefebvre. Hello, bonsoir Paul. Just une traduction très mal faite en français sur l'appli des restaurants Subway. Bisou bye. Right, let's have a look. Um, hello Manon, mon profil et préférence. Mon profil et préférence. My profile and preferences. I don't see a problem with that, but maybe there is. Uh, but the best one here is moi déconnecté. <laughs> How would you say that in English? Disconnect me? No. Uh, unlog myself? How would you say it in English? When you when you log in and you disconnect, it would just be disconnect. Déconnecté. Just, why is moi there? Moi, dé, moi déconnecté. Toi, enculé. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, log out. Thanks very much. Déconnexion. Thank you. Oh, profil sans eux. Mon profil. Oh, mon pro profile. Thank you very much, Lady Melusine. There's me and my uh, not understanding how to write French properly. Uh, great one. Right, Maher Ahamane. Here we go. Hello, Paul. I'm back with a vengeance. This one taken at a supermarket in Damascus. <laughs> I love the shit that he sends. Maher sends the best shit ever. Uh, right. Here we go. Lena. Mamoul with chocolate. Cream milk with coconut humans. <laughs> What the fuck is this? Cream milk with coconut humans. Mahed, you need to let me know what uh, what that says. Uh, 
for real. What is humans? What is the translation of humans uh, in this? I mean, that's amazing. Cre what are those cream milk with coconut? I can't even think about what it would be. Coconut meat? Mamul with chocolate. I don't even know what mamul is. Mamul! Sounds like someone's name. Uh, <laughs> Yushin, cannibalism exists, yeah. <laughs> Would you like the cream milk with the coconut humans? <laughs> Even mamul with chocolate is a bit... What is mamul? I need... I, I, the, right, the word humans and agape is written the same in Arabic. Okay, so... Oh, okay, it's with grated coconut. Okay, so grated and humans... Why does that not surprise me, my head, that the word to great and humans is written the same? Because that could lead to some fucking confusion. After all these years, after all these years <laughs> of me killing people by grating them, I could have, I could have just, it, it, oh man. Coconut humans, I love it. Uh. Ta -ta. Mamul is traditional, a traditional Syrian sweet. Okay. Nice. Okay, mamul with chocolate. That makes sense. Which I guess is what this brown thing on the screen is here. Oh, with great cream milk. With that actually sounds delicious. Now, to be honest, I love coconut milk. Anything coconut, sign me up. I love it. Coconut anything. Ah, oh, too good. Right, that was good. My head. Thanks for that. Uh, right. Let, I think we've got one more. We got two more. Emma. Uh, merci de patienter. Oh no. A restaurant en France, je ne sais pas ce qui s'est passé avec Google. Avec Google, mais les a eu. What? Je, je t'adore toi et tes vidéos sur tous les boulangeries. So thanks very much, uh, Emma. Right, merci de patienter. A hostess. A hostess arrived. A hostess arrived. Thanks to wait. <laughs> a, a hostess will arrive. Thank you for waiting. And what happens if it's a host? Huh? Hostess with the mostess. Um, thank you for waiting. Merci de patienter. Yeah, thanks to wait. Thank you to wait. Drives me nuts. It's a pretty basic mistake though, but I, I, those ones annoy me less, to be honest, because they're very easy to, to come up with a mistake. Right. Voiture bilingue. Last one from Romain B. Uh, sur la voiture d'un ami. C'est une Cadillac qui ne parle pas très bien français. Écran en bas à gauche. Romain, aka Cavalino. Uh, right. Guy has got a Cadillac. And uh, it can't translate into French, right? Gamme en carburant. Okay. Pression pneu. Okay. Gamme en carburant. What does it say? I mean, what that? Fuel level. Level. Gamme. Does gamme translate to level? Une gamme. Vie du pétrole. Life of petrol. <laughs> what the fuck? What would that even be in English? Uh, range. Oh, range. Cavalino, he's here. Range. Pe range. Range of fuel. Gamma. Range. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, range. Like, if you have uh, a range of running clothes in a shop uh, because you're looking to buy some new running gear, uh, you go, ah, c'est la gamme. C'est la gamme running. It's the, ra it's the running range. Range, gamme en carburant. Range of petrol. Gas range, okay. What's the other one? Vidu li petrol life, 100%. Is that presumably uh, how much you've got left? Autonomie, it should be autonomie, right? Le uh, 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 <laughs> um, fuel range, range, niveau, range, 100%, whatever. It's ridiculous. You'd have thought that Cadillac would have figured out their... Fr is this a French car as well? It is, because it's in kilometers per hour. Come on, guys. Check it before you put it on the market, you bunch of idiots. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sending me those terrible translations. They were super fun. Oh, now, before you go, uh, I completely forgot to announce this. But tomorrow we are announcing, I am announcing, the world is announcing um, a new show that I'm doing. Uh, Paul Taylor and Friends in Paris. Uh, it's happening on March the 27th. Put it in your calendars. Um, it's on Wednesday, March 27th, 8 p.m. 
at the Apollo Theater. It's a show only in English. It's me, Paul Taylor, and my friends, who are also comedians, uh, who will make you laugh in English. Uh, it will be announced tomorrow on my social media. Uh, if uh, it, uh, Tomorrow on social media, which is Tuesday the 12th, for anyone watching this afterwards, Tuesday the 12th uh, is when we announce it. The pre-sale of the tickets, i.e. if you're a member of my Patreon community, you will get access to the pre-sale on Wednesday the 13th. And then the general uh, sale goes, uh, general on sale, whatever you call it, is on Thursday uh, uh, on Thursday the 14th. So, for everyone who's not on Patreon, Thursday the 14th, set your alarms to buy tickets to Paul Taylor and Friends. Uh, it's at the Apollo Theatre. It's going to be super fun. Uh, all in English. I'm starting my only English career uh, by starting off at home in France. Uh, why not? Uh, and then uh, tickets are on sale on the 14th. If you're a member of my Patreon, uh, it, they will be on sale uh, on the 13th. I will put the link on Patreon. Uh, also, speaking of Patreon, uh, it's patreon.com slash Paul Taylor. Uh, but uh, also, what was I going to say? I'm doing another hour of this uh, afterwards. It's part of your thing as a Patreon member. Not only do you get exclusive early access to tickets, you also get uh, a, a, an extra hour of me talking shit every week as well as, uh, as, well as behind the scenes uh, from my previous stand-up shows. Uh, all the back catalogue of all my happy hour lives uh, from back when I was doing those uh, during COVID, as well as ju just a whole bunch of other uh, exclusive stuff in there. So Patreon, uh, I will see you in a couple of minutes uh, for our Patreon only live, um, where I might crack out a real gin and tonic. Fuck off, I'm going to actually have a real gin and tonic uh, during uh, the live. And for everyone else, I will see you next Monday. Will I see you next Monday? Yes, I will see you next Monday, uh, next, mo next Monday live. Um, and everyone else, I will see you uh, on social media. That's no, that's what I said. Shut up, Paul. I'll see everyone next Monday. Patreon, see you in a couple of minutes. Thanks for being here and helping me destroy some French stereotypes. That's it. Peace, bye. <laughs>